I'll answer your questions for you. Front row right, Austin. Uh, Urban, just, just from a maybe mechanic standpoint, with play calling, this is your first game with you and Coach Day and Coach Wilson. I wonder how you felt that went, if there were any hiccups at all, if that, just, you know, how that went for the first time. Oh, yeah, it went very good, I thought. Uh, obviously, it didn't start out very fast, and you look at results, but I looked at the conversations, the uh, adjustments made, the mechanics on the sideline, etc. I thought it was pretty good. I think you said a couple weeks ago that you were trying in scrimmages to practice in the training camp to give them different scenarios. How did that help, and did you have any surprises as you guys got into game one? Oh. Uh, no, it went pretty, you know, other than we had a, about four or three and outs in the second quarter, I believe that was. But mechanically, no, and halftime was very good. And uh, the play call, you know, we played at a pretty good tempo. So overall, I thought it was pretty good. Urban Middle, Dave. Urban, there was so much talk about right guard entering the season. I know you guys said that maybe seven guys were in competition for that job. How do you feel like after you watched the film that Brandon Bowen played in his debut? Yeah, I graded a champion. I still think he can play much better. But the first time out, you know, our, our offensive line coach, Stud, uh, decided to give him a champion. And then I agreed with it when I thought about it. He played hard. And and uh, this will be obviously a heck of a challenge for him. Isaiah Prince, how, played really well. How would you describe how he's improved? Like, what areas has he Yeah, he's one of our most improved players. You know, he's a tall guy. And that's, you know, you, there's positive and negatives about tall, you know, the six seven linemen, which we happen to get some of around here. Uh, is the ability you have to bend them all the time because they can, you know, you can get out of football position. And so well, we worked very hard on his lower body strength to be able to play football in the band, and he was much better at that. Second row left, all right. Urban, I know you talked after the game about how you thought the receivers played hard and you saw some good things. Um, I know that Ben Victor and Austin Mack are major parts of your guys' plans, and, you know, obviously if they're successful, you guys are successful. They combined for two receptions. I was wondering what your take was on how those two played and, how hopeful you are that maybe they'll come around and, and beat big production guys. Thank you. Did Austin grade a champion? I can't remember. Um, oh, I'm so into this game. Sorry, guy. I, you, that seemed like seven weeks ago, that last game. So let's talk about this one. They're, they're a big part of our offense moving forward. Okay, far left, Matt. Uh, just talk about this game. Uh, Oklahoma Thank you. <laughs> Oklahoma defensively, what jumps out at you? That is very good players. You know, they're, we're still. You know, it's one of those games they played last week that you know we, we didn't see a whole bunch, and so we have to prepare for a four down, three down, bear the whole package because th this is tough. You know, when you, you know, they're very good coaches, very good players. So it's you know, first of all, it's that, and then the second part is what we saw last week is you might as well throw the film away. You know, it's I'm sure we're going to see something other than what they showed. Atmosphere on Saturday. I mean, you went there last year. I know it was a great atmosphere, but what are you expecting? How big of a difference can that make in special games like that? Well, we have to play well, but when you play well, uh, certainly the crowd gets into it. And, and uh, you know, I know on the final game last year, the crowd had a huge part to do with that. So uh, we have the as good a stadium, finest stadium in America, and we have great fans. So, but we have to play well to get them into the game. So that should be a, a home field advantage, obviously. Front or left, Bill? Have you seen his athletic ability develop to the point where he is now? And how important is his ability to play in space and chase up down when a quarterback? Like oh, yeah, field yeah he's he's going to be a critical guy uh, for us, and he is uh, he, he's as hard a working guy as we've ever had around here. He's in the John Salmon type category as far as how hard he works, and he's a made player. You know, some guys are kind of very natural at what they do, and he's a you know he was not a natural defensive end four years ago. He's become very natural because of hard work. So. He's a made player. And then um, Oklahoma, their, their tight end, I don't know how many guys in the country play the way that guy does. He's like a, I mean, he's basically a receiver. What, what kind of challenge does he present to your Well, his size, you know, that's the thing that when you see guys like that, that they bodies you. You know, he's got very good athleticism for as big as he is and also just the sheer, you know, that's matchup issues that big guys have. And uh, that's the biggest issue with him. Hell of a player. Uh, front row, Bill. Very focused on the X's and O's, but this is obviously a huge game for playoff implications. I know you're not thinking that way, but last year, that win probably got you into the playoff. How much is that on your mind at all? Do you think about that? Not at all. Second row middle, Barry from Oklahoma. You know, Lincoln Riley's trying to, he's doing something they tell you not to do, which is follow the legend. You follow two legends, not immediately, but with a short time in, in between. What, why have you been successful in, in following? 
guys who were, who were legends, and, and what's the key to, to making sure that's a success? That's a great question, and I, I just, you know, obviously following Coach Stoops is a tall order. Um, I think the thing that I've advised my coaches when they go into positions and, and take new spots is that always be extremely complimentary. Uh, never talked as if those players aren't your players. They're, you know, and, and obviously he was elevated from inside the staff. But when I hear coaches say, "Well, it's not; these aren't my guys," or you know, wait, wait till he gets his guys in there, I, I cringe. Whose guys do you think they are? Once you become the head coach, they're officially your guys, and many you say, "I do." And so that's advice. And you know, I, I don't know if that's pertinent in this situation because he's they are his guys. But that's that's just advice. You know, when I hear that, I just you gotta be kidding me. Why would a coach say that? that because what do you think those players are doing? Those players are listening. So they are your guys. That's my advice to him, and not that he needs my advice. I think that's kind of an interesting, you know, you don't see that very often where you get to hand it off to who you want to hand it off to. And that's a pretty good setup for him. The experience factor is massive between you and him. He turned 34 yesterday. Is, is there any disadvantage to being a head coach at such a young age? Disadvantage? Uh, I'm not sure how to answer that one. <laughs> I was 34 once. My gosh, that was a long time ago. All right, final questions right here. Front row, Tim. Oh, Irv, uh, when you look at this game, a lot of people look at the uh, matchup between your defensive front, your deep defensive front, and their offensive line, which is considered to be one of the better, maybe the best offensive line in the country. How do you see that matchup? I mean, and, uh, what, what, and when, you, when you define a good offensive line, what does that mean to you? Well, they control the line of scrimmage, and uh, they are one of the top offense lines in the country. Very experienced. I want to say they had seven guys that have started for them, and uh, very talented, big guys that uh, protect their quarterback. And you know, they control the game. You know, when uh, you see all the yards that a team like Oklahoma puts up, sure, the quarterback, receivers, everybody's really good players, but they control the line of scrimmage. That's what makes them so good. Coach, thank you. Very thank much. you, guys.